we think school's out forever. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> We're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Owl Stretching Time. So the last time on the Owl House, it was about a week and a half after all the shit went down and Luz took on the Emperor and pretty much got herself stranded in the Boiling Isles. She had tried to uh, get some jobs to sustain herself and Ida and Lilith, not to very much success, but thankfully after coming together and figuring things out, they managed to procure enough money so that, you know, they can live comfortably for the time being. But today, we answer the question of whether or not Luce will be going back to school with the episode... Escaping Expulsion. Again, I addressed this all back in the last episode as to whether Luce has been attending school while she was trying to work for money for Ida. I assume they're going to answer that in this as to whether or not she'd still be allowed back. Because I know the school has definitely has some standards... So there's probably only so much school she can miss before they kick her ass out. I mean, she's already on thin ice as is with all the troubles she's caused thus far, not to mention being associated with Ida. I did see uh, one or two pictures in regards to this. Mainly they showed who I believe is uh, Amity's mother. She's uh, posing a la Frank Scorpio from, uh, <laughs> from Simpsons. But yeah, I'm sure there's a lot to like Amity's parents that we're going to find out soon. It's probably not going to be good. So let's not wait any longer. Uh, school's now in session, everyone, so play. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Text <twist>. me! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, valued investors. Light Industries Private Sale. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Odalia, and as an oracle, I predict you'll love what we've got in store huh. for you tonight. Oracle, huh? We are proud to present the Abomaton. Remember our deal? Make this look good and we'll forgive your recent lackluster performance in school. Oh, oh, yes, Mom. Wow, it's so fast and strong. Order now. Whoopsie. <laughs> uh -oh. Nope. Well, you got that. You just lost us a lot of money. What's with you lately? Oh, Looks boy. like our precious mittens has been getting distracted. Mm. So her mother calls her mittens. It's probably like a condescending nickname because some parents do that with kids. Mm. Like I thought it was just her uh, siblings that called her that, but damn, her own mother. You know how some parents are, they call them like princess or schnookums or something like that. <laughs> Welcome to day three of Lucy's Magic Boot Camp. I was just about to say, like, this is whole episode an infomercial. <laughs> okay, we've covered every glyph I've learned up until now. Are we about to encounter a never-before-seen glyph? Unfortunately, no. These four either came from nature or another witch's spell. I don't know where to find more. Uh... In any case, today we're learning how to alter glyphs to do specific things. And Miss Teacher, did I do it right? Yeah, that's really good. Let's see how mm. you're such a brown right? noser. <laughs> <laughs> She's carving into her desk. <laughs> That's such a good Double lift combo. Go! You're not gonna have a desk anymore. But... Oh, dang. I was hoping for more of an ice blast situation. Uh, okay, uh, King's in charge while I'm gone. Bye! <laughs> Power! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. no. Teacher's gone! Who oh. gave him a Thor <laughs> other combos I can try. Yeah, if we want to be powerful again, we're gonna have to start thinking outside the box. If we want to be She's powerful, doing exactly what Luce was doing before. Yeah. And we can only do that through memorization, repetition, and following the rules. Well, I'm more interested in experimentation, Whatever you say, Twilight. And, uh, laughing at tools, like you. Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll deal with it. No one ever said power came with responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not in this universe. Yeah. <laughs> so after the petrification ceremony. Puberty. I can't thank you guys enough huh. for helping me and Ida at the conformatorium. That's cool. I just hope it helps Ida learn my name. She keeps calling me Goops. Hey, yeah. Goops. It's already spreading. <laughs> hey, Luce. Well, it has been a year, so. In a celebration I remember during Agony of a Witch, his voice was cracking. Oh, wow. That sounds so... 
Uh. <laughs> the fairies. The ingredients are very fresh. Thank Aww, you. Aw, she made her a pie. After everything that's happened, lose no feta, win up hog, and Augustus Porter. Report to Principal Bob's office now. And you too, Amity. <sighs> These are but a few of the incidents that have endangered Hexide students, including our daughter. She's such so, a Karen. The PCA has decided. These three are bad influences and must be executed. <gasps> <clears throat> I mean expelled. What? What? Take this as a lesson, Mittens. A blind always upholds their end of the deal. <gasps> Loose Willow Augustus. Effective immediately. You are no longer students of Exide. No! But I say, Andy! Tell him! I... Good. Now, you'll be taking <laughs> Actually, I'm appalled at the drama class right now. What are you thinking? Oh, my dad can't find out about this. I guess I'll have to start surviving off the land. Ah, oh, this is impossible. What have we ever done to you? Loose, was it? Please, this isn't personal. I yes, actually it is. appreciate your tenacity. We are just trying to teach our daughter a valuable lesson in business. I'm calling applesauce on this business baloney. Your human language is hard to understand, but I think I see your point. Ooh. If you're interested in talking things through, I'm sure we can come to some sort of an agreement. Ooh, don't do it. Good. I smell manipulation. Come on, Bruce. We can figure this out on our own. <laughs> That's right. We'll get back into Hexide or die trying. No one's dying. <laughs> <Not bad attitude. laughs> yes, well, when that doesn't work, you know where to find us. The Lift Pyramid! Oh, gosh. And what are you expecting this glyph pyramid to do? Watch and learn. Um. Uh, okay, let's think. Ooh. Aww. He just. Cody became Ice King. <laughs> Mrs. Potts and Chip. Oh, God. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Blight. <laughs> He's getting ready for our big demonstration tonight. It's looking good, hon. Oh, I'm here geez. to appeal to your hearts, Blight. That's sweet. You might want to go get ready, because we have a long night ahead of us, folks. Welcome back to Ooh, Blight my. Industries. Light Industries, the abomination. Light Industries, the magic wand. Light Industries, the flamethrower. Kids love her. I already don't like her, Mom. This means her dad there was awesome. That happens. That happens a lot. I'm assuming it's one of those deals where, you know, 
he has been put through it so much, and it's like, you know what, if you're doing it to somebody else, I don't have to deal with it. I'm dead inside at this point, so... It's it's too real of a thing. What would you say is the specialty of Blight Industries? We make a variety of abomination-based accessories for home security. Oh, that sounds pretty safe. But we specialize in weaponry. You might want to duck. So it's Stark Industries. <laughs> Our sticky launcher can peacefully subdue any foe. And if peaceful isn't your thing. Yep, there it is. Did anyone come to the house today? <laughs> we'll spend all our free time having fun as a family. See you at first light for a test on the uh, life cycle home. of a common swamp toad. Oh, oh, was that? Was oh, oh. Hey, who is the oh, <laughs> Once again, we cross the shows. Moose is in trouble. Again. <laughs> <laughs> we should just brush the guards at the door. No, no, no. I'll distract them with illusions of beautiful lady guys. This isn't a cartoon from the 40s, Gus. <laughs> this could work. We should just bust our way through. You're stunting my growth as an artist. We're running just out of time. Here's an idea. Why don't you just walk through the front? <laughs> You're helping, of course. They just do. don't tell mom. They do like loose, so mm -hmm. it, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> they just can't stop. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a hand, folks. Thank you, thank you. What has science done? Oh god, it's Thanos. The Abomaton 2.0! Twice as fast as your ass. It won't rest until its enemy is completely eliminated. There it is. I love how no one in the crowd was twice at a uh, child cruelty. Didn't you hear me? It won't rest until its enemy is completely eliminated. Yay, murder. Okay, at least you can't get me up here. Um... Loose, you fool! <laughs> <laughs> Stop saying shit like that! I sword! <laughs> Great, now you endangered your potential buyers. Great hey, marketing boy. strategy. I'm dead! Aww. Dramatic woof. Aw, she called her her loose. <laughs> she has a necklace now. Are these distress noises or normal noises? I am your mother. You will obey me and die. <laughs> <laughs> Ida, help me! Help me, Ida! Ida, help me! <laughs> Meh. Yeah, yeah, I messed up. Actually, I'd like to try an experiment. <laughs> 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 Light, you are in so much trouble. Yeah! Luce, are you okay? Aww. Look out! Aww. Why are you both Let my friends back into Hexide, or else your precious investors will watch me rip this thing apart bit by bit. Can Damn! Do that? Shh! <laughs> <laughs> it's Fine, it's a deal. Because if I actually let them go back, I know. I'll make sure they catch Natalia, him. you made a deal with your daughter, and a blight always upholds their end of the deal. Huh. Besides, she's getting stronger. Alador! <laughs> 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 okay, so... Your dad is ADD or something. How did you beat that thing again? Would you like me to lay out the basics? And drawing glyphs on top of each other like you did was like screaming three different words at the same time. The spell got confused. Huh. Yes. The glyph combo, copyright me, Lilith, helps organize <laughs> the commands. Dreamer. <laughs> so you can combine and specify what you want to do. Maybe the reason Luce hasn't found any more glyphs is because there aren't any more. Then we better start learning some new combinations. Huh. Hey guys! Mm. Wait, Miss Teacher. <laughs> do I get extra credit? <laughs> oh! My gosh! Mm. I can do it too. <laughs> Gold star, you get a gold star. <laughs> Excellent job on the 2.0, dear. Yes, your vomitons are quite extraordinary. Oh, no. 
Too bad no one will be receiving them. The Emperor will be buying every one of your Abomatons, and will personally fund research into making them stronger. Huh. But that's great news! We are honored to have- You should be. Emperor Bellos doesn't take kindly to citizens making a private army. Hmm. There's the rub. Yeah, Amity's parents suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I should have figured as much. Aside from the flashback, I remember Dana Terrace uh, answering someone's question as to whether Amity's hair was naturally green and brown or if she dyed it. The answer was that her mother dyes it, so her kids all were color coordinated. And I'm like, wow. And now this just proves, like, not only is she a bad mother, but she's really bloodthirsty when it comes to uh, selling her tech. And she's apparently one of those, uh, what do they call, what's that branch, that coven, like the psychic medium Oh, type? Oracle. Yeah, the Oracle yeah. type. She probably can foresee what's going to be a great business deal or success or something, which I guess works with her husband's abomination making. So they are a good duo in that sense. Mm -hmm. It just sucks that she uses her own children as examples as to how these high-tech weaponry actually works. Mm -hmm. Sounds like basically manipulating her whole entire family. Mm-hmm. Like, she apparently doesn't do it as much with the twins, though. Mm. Like, they, you know, obviously don't want to cross their mom, you know, because they didn't want to be... They told them not to say they were mm -hmm. involved, but at the same time, they don't get treated near as harshly mm -hmm. as Amity seems to be. They're probably too free-spirited for her to really control, and she probably can see that, which is why she probably pins Amity even more because, mm -hmm. you know, Amity seems very passive. That, and probably the twins are good at, like, doing what she says, but not really. They probably don't even, she probably doesn't even know about half the shenanigans mm -hmm. they pull. But yeah, the way her mother kept, like, secretly, like, threatening her and stuff, like, reminded me a lot of uh, Pacifica from Gravity Falls. Yep. The way her father would ring that bell every time she disobeyed, it's like, what is he gonna do if she doesn't, like, obey the bell? That always mm -hmm. bothered me, because it's like, does he, like, beat her in secret or something? Maybe not so much physical, but mental. mental abuse. Probably takes away stuff. Yeah, or berates her a lot. <laughs> that brought back a lot of flashbacks for mm -hmm. me, because I grew up with a stern parent who would, like, scare me into submission mm -hmm. sometimes, and it's like... On the one hand, yeah, it was cowardly of Amity not to stand up for her friends when her mother was basically expelling them just for associating with her, but... At the same time... If she stands up, the consequences on are her much own worse. Her, yeah. So, like, I could understand her in that. It just sucks that, like, none of the parents came to, like, the kids, like, defense or anything. Because, like, they immediately sent out, like, those, I'll just call them howlers for now, to, like, yell yeah. at them and, you know, say, Oh, you got expelled. You're in trouble. Now we're going to homeschool you. Yeah, yeah. It was like, aren't you going to ask why they got expelled? Because think about it. It's because of the mother. Yeah, I know she used the excuse that, oh, they destroyed the detention thing. They created that situation at uh, Grom, but it's like, I think the parents would have been aware of that already. Mm. <laughs> also, the fact that it's like, you might be the head of the, you know, whatever the PTA or PCA in this case is, but it's like, I would think you'd need to confer more with the association, with other parents. I don't think you can just go ahead and say these, you know, students are expelled without bringing their parents in on this. Yes and no. I kind of think back to uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Remember how Lucius was able to, like, get all of, like, his uh, things he wanted done simply because he was, like, head of, like, a committee and he pressured slash blackmailed everyone else in the committee? Yeah, but if, if we're talking about, you know, expelling students... I think that's not just something that you can do of your own accord. There's a process to that, and I think... I would think so, yeah. but at the same time, A, she's from a powerful witch family, B, she's rich, and C, you know, she controls a lot mm. of, like, you know, the tech in industry and stuff, so it stands to reason there probably isn't that many willing to go mm. up against her. Still, I feel like... There should be an appeal process. There should, but I guess for the sake of uh, the plot, you know, just make it so that they mm. get expelled, no question. I object. <laughs> I just love the principal is so distraught over that whole I process. I told you he was on their side. <laughs> I freaking said. 
You didn't want to believe it, but I called okay, it. Okay, yes, he's on their side, but not to the extent where he's willing to go against the parents to yeah. stop them from being expelled. He could have allowed them to sneak back in, but mm -hmm. he still fought against them, even though it hurt Maybe him he's under too much observation, <laughs> so maybe he, he, uh, he it was too hard for him to do that. That was just so heartbreaking, though. He's like, he's in tears. He's like, I miss you guys. Why did you have to get expelled? <laughs> My heart. <laughs> I was surprised that Amity's father actually, like, stood up to the mother at the mm -hmm. end. Because, like, as we, I was saying, I thought he was, like, real passive when it came to the mother basically doing whatever it is she wanted. I think also the family name came into play there. Because, yeah. as he said... The Blights always honor their promises. True. So it's like, that that's where he has a loophole where he can step in and Yeah, because that technically is his yeah. family name, yeah. so that only makes sense. But now the uh, the Emperor is uh, taking all of their uh, abomination tech, which makes me worried mm. for the future. I wondered if like they actually got paid for that or if the Emperor just expected them to hand it over. I'm going to expect that they were just expected to hand it over. Yeah. It sucks with their sales, but... Maybe, if, if anything, like, they might provide them with what they need to make, mm. but nothing, you know, no profit or anything like that. Right. I, I'm assuming this is, you're either loyal to the cause or we will yeah. ruin you. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and considering how tough those things were. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank God Amity was there and has, like, really good control over abominations, but even she struggled with that. So that makes me worried for when the Emperor finally makes his move and then, you know, suddenly we have these freaking abomination things overrunning either the Boiling Isles or whatever world they decide to, uh... they decide to invade. <laughs> also, is this me or are a lot of these Disney shows, like... You know, their ultimate conflict has been building toward the same thing. Because think about it, like, Gravity Falls' big thing was Bill coming back, being trapped in his uh, dimension, and is now trying to pull other creatures into the dimension. You have DuckTales, which involved portals to other worlds, and, yeah. worlds and stuff. You had Amphibia, where they have that, where they have the Calamity Bots who can travel to other worlds. And then this, it's like, is this the new theme with all of Disney now? Is this the sky beam and the sky cliche or something? Like, I'm not totally complaining about it, because, you know, the good thing about having the whole, uh, you know, interdimensional war thing is that mm -hmm. it allows you to expand the uh, setting, mm -hmm. expand, like, the different uh, worlds you can explore. It's just weird to me that they all kind of lead toward that. <laughs> Doesn't help too, all the Easter eggs yeah. in there. <laughs> Freaking hop pop on one of the boats. <laughs> oh my god, like, the, I can see the theories now. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm fine with Amphibia crossing over with Gravity Falls, given that it's it already technically happened, and plus they're doing, you know, a whole interdimensional thing, so that's fine. And I mean, granted, Owl House 2 is interdimensional, but I feel like Owl House should stand on its own. Maybe, but... Like, I'm fine with the Easter eggs, but don't the, go this, beyond like, that. This, keeps giving me, like, I, I, I want to say, like, false hope, but some, like, inkling in my brain is thinking, like, is this all building up to, like, the ultimate crossover or something? Think about it, like, even if it's corporate star versus the forces of evil into this. Like, that whole crossover cartoon that was, went on uh, YouTube, that could theoretically happen with these five shows. Maybe even more if we really dig into it. It's gonna get a little weird. <laughs> gonna get a little wild. <laughs> Heck, we can even throw Milo Murphy in there. I'm hoping. <laughs> oh my god, the possibility. Well, Milo Murphy and Phineas and Fur because they're same universe. God, this is like the MCU, but like Disney cartoons. Like, theoretically, we, <laughs> they have what they need to make the ultimate crossover. <laughs> and then, for good measure, throw Wander over yonder in. Yeah. Or... Oh my god. And then, and then just to fuck with people, throw Rick and Morty in there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think they already said that there's there's a connection with Rick and Morty yes. and Gravity Falls, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, 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 you, you throw in uh, American Dragon Jake Long in there. <laughs> Just your whole uh, Disney <laughs> animated universe and, and DuckTales. Where does it end? <laughs> gargoyles. <laughs> well, not gargoyles so much, I mean... Come on, you heard what Eric was saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Just throw everything in there. <laughs> I feel like this should be like its own video. Just, <laughs> just like theorizing all the possible crossovers that could happen because of all these shows like similar themes with interdimensional travel and whatnot. Yeah, I'll leave that to the round table. Yeah. I don't think we're qualified quite to that no. extent. Like I said, it's yeah. fun to think of, though. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, back to the episode. Yeah. Um, so yeah, aside from that main issue, um, it was fascinating to watch uh, Ida and Lilith learning how to uh, use the glyphs. I love how Lilith, like, picked it up, like, almost instantly. Which I guess makes sense given, you know, she was a prodigy in school. Yep. And it makes sense Ida would slack off and try to take shortcuts, as she did in school as well. But in this case, she can't do what she did then, because back then she was, like, proficient at potion making. But this is different. This is, like, basically, you know, artifacts, like symbols mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and as Full Metal Alchemist has taught us, if you don't get that shit right, it goes wrong real bad. Mm -hmm. I like how Lilith kind of figured out, you know, how you can combine the glyphs without, like, destroying <laughs> everything. Because the glyphs don't exactly make magic. They control the magic. So it makes sense that, you know... You try to slam everything thing at once and it gets confused. It's kind of like saying an incantation for a mm -hmm. spell. You don't like say a bunch of jarble mm -hmm. words or whatever and like expect it to work. You have to like get the sequence down exactly and... It's Leviosa. <laughs> exactly. I do find it weird though that those are the only elements that she was able to find. Because, I mean, I know you got the basics. Like, you have light, you have water, you have uh, fire, you have plants. But I figured there would be more. Because, I mean, you think there'd be, like, a lightning glyph or something, or, um, like, an air glyph. Something, you know, in tail with, like, other, like, normal elements. But I guess if you combine them, they could theoretically create those elements. Because, I mean, I I've seen those happen before. Like, I guess Avatar is a decent example, you know, in terms of how you, you can uh, refine a certain element into something else, like refining fire into electricity. Or earth into metal. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, theoretically, they could make those glyphs, probably create their mm -hmm. own glyphs while they're at it. Yep. I guess these are basically the, the building blocks. Combine them sort of like with, you know, atoms, molecules, in, in uh, you know, everything. It's like you get your sort of periodic table. So they can make, theoretically, the whole, like, mm -hmm. thing full of uh, different types mm -hmm. of spells. Which I think is cool because that means it's like diving more into how people used to do magic, you know, before... The emperor came and split everyone specifically into covens because i'm sure they could find you know find spells that have long been gone since then spells that will probably help defeat the emperor that he can't guard against because that's probably why he split them up to begin mm -hmm. with so they wouldn't combine such chaotic magic yep man the possibilities like i'm excited now yeah <laughs> and then of course the last bit i want to talk about uh loose finally has a reciprocated crush on amity <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from my loose. <laughs> it's like part of me kept thinking, is this going to be a one-way crush where Luge just remains stupid until the very end? But no, in this case, like, Amity saves her and then suddenly she, like, swoons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Swoon. <laughs> and now I'm thinking they're probably both going to be idiots and, like, dance around the issue, even though it's going to be really <laughs> fucking obvious, especially to their friends. Yep. <laughs> Either or, it's still cute though. Yep. Like I look forward to when like they actually make it known. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. E. Rainbow Cat approves. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the uh, next episode? The next episode is Echoes of the Past. If I had to take a guess, because um, I remember in the trailer they showed like a clip of what looks to be Eden Lilith's mother. So if I, I'm guessing maybe she makes her appearance and probably teaches them something. Like once she learns that they lost their magic, it's probably gonna like teach them a different way or something. Or at least we're gonna find out more about you know their backstory, where their family hails from, and you know maybe have some clues as to might help them restore their magic. I mean, we know that their family's like big on birds. I mean, Clawthorn. They're all Ravenclaws, obviously. <laughs> Until our next study session, everyone, I'm Kat McBerry. I'm Doug McBerry. And remember, everyone, don't mix your glyphs or something very awful might happen. Or create any abominations that won't rest until their foe is completely destroyed. And uh, yes, don't summon giant ice monsters that eat everything. <laughs>